a little bit since uh, Representative Yoho is on the way, and as soon as he walks in, I'm out of here. I represent the Citizens Campaign, We the People, outside the Beltway, uh, mostly ladies, and we've been doing this hard for five years. We pro they have protested. I'm a facilitator. I contact the law enforcement. I contact the city governments, and they protest. They exercise their constitutional rights. This was July 6th. This is just a few days ago. This is in Woodbury, Tennessee. These ladies, one lady, there's two PhDs, by the way, in this group. They were out in the sun, hot sun, 93 degrees, for two hours. Big rigs were coming by, small road. They could almost reach out and touch them. The horses were in there. The horses, they don't have this big lick. Wear these shoes unless these horses have been sore. That's according to Don jo Dr. John Hafner, MTSU horse science professor. These shoes came off of this horse. His name's Jens Ice Glimmer. We rescued him going on to slaughter, getting ready to go to slaughter, took him to a public auction, his feet in this condition. They showed him about 10 days before in Kentucky. Um, the sale was in Cookville, Tennessee. Those are his feet on the front of this podium that day. Took him back from the sale immediately to a veterinarian the next day. They verified his condition of his feet. Three days later, I had the USDA vets come, Dr. Bart Durham, with USDA APHIS. He had a videographer. Again, confirmed the condition of the feet. Just what you see. I called WSMV Channel 4 in Nashville, NBC. They did an interview. They said, we're not going to do this unless you have a vet stand beside them. You go try to find and get a vet in Middle Tennessee to do this. The gentleman stood up. Tom James, 80 years old used to be in spec for the USDA. He said, this is a scarred horse. This is soaring. It's not just a few bad apples. You can't do this. They're all bad apples. It's like rooster fighting and dog fighting. It's 2019, and that day has come. This has got to end. That's what this vote is about this afternoon. I want, and I'm from Mississippi. I can speak about the South. It's like Catherine Stockett, who grew up down the street, who wrote the help. Says I can say Mississippi's like my mama. I can say anything I want to about it, but I got you can't. But I can, and I will say it. It's like rooster fighting and dog fighting. If time has come and it has gone, that's what the vote's about. We've got Republicans, we got Democrats together on this. It's bipartisan as it gets. I'm wearing the purple tie to symbolize that, and I'm so happy and proud that everybody's here. That this is reaching out and getting the media. One more time, we've got an amazing coalition of congressmen. Such to be proud of. And uh, Senator Tidings, got to speak about him just a second. He's my inspiration. I met Joe Tidings when he's only about 85 years old. I wrote, have a blog some of you know about. He's told me one day, said, oh. well, good. Congressman, yo ho, come on in, please. All right, as soon as he walks in, he's got it. Senator Tidings told me, he says, Clint, I want you to knock it off. I don't want to see any more stories about an 86-year-old. <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. Anyway, the senator was an amazing man to work with. He never not came forward on anything we asked him to do. He was a contemporary of John and Robert Kennedy. Now, let's come on. Congressman Yoho, you got it. Come on, sir. This is Congressman Ted Yoho, great state of Florida. He's a lead sponsor of the horse, the Tidings Memorial Pass Act, H.R. 693. Yeah, sir. sir, come on up here and take yes, the podium. Sir. How you we doing? have a great bipartisan. Oh, this right. purple tie is to symbolize the bipartisanship. There you go. Thank you. Thank Mario, you. how you doing? Yes, yeah, good to see you. Appreciate it. Stands an American hero. <laughs> no. Glad that you're here. Certainly are. I tell you what, we got work to do. We thought we were clear. I just came from a meeting where a proponent of this out of Tennessee, congressman, you know who he is, yeah. uh, said this bill is coming up today on suspension. We need to oppose it. The Farm Bureau's against it. That's a lie. The Tennessee Farm Bureau may be in his area, but not the, the Federal Farm Bureau Federation, all of them. Um, he said that this thing is not needed, but we know there's more cases of these. Uh, it's interesting you have the roller chains here. You know, if you pick these things up, you can feel, sorry about that. You can feel the weight of them. And I had a, uh, one of the main people of this industry, I, I won't name him, but he's from Tennessee. We had an hour and a long conversation, hour and a half long conversation. And at the end of the meeting, he goes, 
Congressman, what we're talking about is these chains aren't any heavier in relationship than the watch you wear on your wrist. And I said, you know what, that's probably true. I said, but there's a big difference. He goes, what is that? I said, I choose to wear this watch. That horse doesn't have an option. And when people do these things to the horses, to win a blue ribbon, I think it's unconscionable. So you're either for animal abuse or you're against it. These shoes, I don't like these shoes, um, but we've made exceptions in this bill that you can have built up shoes if it's on the advice of a veterinarian. The kicking chains, I'm okay if they're in the stall. I've had horses that have fractured their hocks by kicking the walls, and so the kicking chains I'm okay with for that reason. I don't think you need to have rolling devices on the legs. Um, and the idea of putting a substance on there to irritate the skin just so they get a better response. How you doing, man? Get a better response out of the roller chain so that they have an exaggerated gait. I think that's just wrong in the animal industry. I've dealt with pretty much every gated horse that you can imagine from Pasifinos to saddlebreds to, you know, name the breed. We've dealt with them. Horses have a natural gait. Some horses are blessed like people. They have more athletic ability, but it comes down to the trainer and a good trainer that does the ethical thing that accentuates that naturally. And I challenge this breeder out of Tennessee that you could set the breed standard for the future to get away from this garbage because you don't need it. Work with the trainer and the genetics of the horse to accentuate that what you want naturally. And I, we're going to stand behind this. This will be a fight on the floor today. We weren't expecting this, but they're going to call for a voice vote. I'm going to speak about this, and uh, we're going to talk more about this. And so our work is almost done, but then we have to get it over the line, and then we've got to get it through the Senate. And it's going to be by the advocacy that you guys have done in the past, the past, the past act, in the past for the past act, uh, to make this through. This is something that we want off the table. This industry has had over 40 years to clean up their mess. And they have it. And again, there are some bad players. That industry needs to throw those bad players out. We put in the bill that you can have, um, we, we put in objective testing or uh, evaluation and subjective testing and evaluation. We have also put in there a recourse for the trainer and or owner if they feel they've been um, unduly criticized or fined by the USDA inspector that there's safeguards, because I've been on the side of the owner where things like this have happened, and they're just stuck. So we want to make sure there's protection for the owner, for the ethical owner and trainer, and get everybody else out of the industry. Appreciate the work you guys have done. We're going to stand strong with this. I need to give thanks to the people that have supported this. You know, um, Kurt Schrader and I have worked on this for the last three Congresses, if not four. Um, Mr. Cohen's been a big advocate of this. Um, um, and the, the, the leadership of the House today. This bill would not come up if it wasn't for them, so I, I applaud them. And it is, as you said with the purple tie, a strong bipartisan support. And you out in the field putting pressure on your members. That's the way things get done up here, so thank you, and uh, watch the House today. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. So wow. Good. That's something, isn't it? Thank you. Very thank you. Much. I, I just uh, wanted to say again, reiterate our thanks to Mr. Yoho. He's been a very true champion on this. Uh, his comms director, Brian Cavani, has done a terrific job. Uh, back six or seven years ago, uh, there are only two veterinarians in Congress that have practiced veterinary medicine, he and Mr. Schrader. They really helped us increase awareness about this and explain what this is. And these guys are real American heroes and members of Congress that everybody should applaud. Let me tell you, too, the guy that's got the opposition bill that's running the, the opposition <coughs> today, he goes, I'll be real honest with you, I don't know anything about this, it, this issue. But he's leading the opposition on this, and we've tried to educate him, but he's got a base that is supporting him. And th this whole notion that if, if this bill goes through, it's going to ruin that industry, that's a fallacy. It'll make that industry stronger and better. Um, and so, you know, don't fall into the, the garbage they're going to tell you. Congressman, this is what we wanted to go back to. Yeah. This is flat shop. It's not those god awful contraptions. This is it. And that's really what I would prefer, and most of our breeds are like that. Yes. I mean, you guys have seen the Pasifino gate. I mean, yes. it's a natural gate. 
Yes. And they have flat, they're flat shot. Hi, Mr. Paselli. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. I'll take care. <laughs> yeah, we'll go out here. So we now, the congressman came in as I was speaking, and I know we're better heck a lot than it be, but let me finish up with a couple things. We have something about the, the big lick. This is a mantra. Big lick, big lie. They tell a lot of stories, okay, to try to move the goalpost, change the facts. They're only one set of facts. But unfortunately, they're good at what they do with the misinformation. We heard the congressman address that here today. So let me show you something. And by the way, these are the difference makers. Now, this is outside the beltway. We the people, First Amendment, free speech. It's got two PhDs standing in the hot sun for 93 degrees for two hours in Woodbury, Tennessee, on July 6th. That's not long ago. Here they are. They're heroes. Priscilla Presley says they're heroes. They are heroes. Now, this is the public relations picture of the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. I've been there a lot of times. That, seat, that stadium seats 30,000 people. This is what they have on the internet right now. Okay? And they're trying to say, You'll destroy a Tennessee tradition. Now, the man that says that has not been to this celebration in 34 years. That's U.S. Senator Lamar Alexander, senior senator from Tennessee, who's retiring. And why he sponsored this bill, I don't know, except for $3 million given to him by Mr. Steve Smith as a campaign chairman. Here is reality. We protested in front of that horse show last year for five nights. It goes on 10 nights. This is reality. This is the last night. This is the big night. Do you see this picture? It's empty. They're not going to tell you that. It wasn't raining that night. It was good weather. It's empty. It's empty because of those ladies' picture I just held up. And it's empty because of what's going on up here. But we're going to end this with that bill or without that bill. Because the decent people, and there's the state of Tennessee and the South, and I'm from the South, we're Southerners. We got this. We're going to take care of it. And we will end this just by attrition. They can't survive this. They're on the ropes, the law. We're going to take this law back. We're going to run it in every newspaper we can. The editor of the Woodbury, Tennessee paper let me run a full page ad. Now, he owns a paper. He also happens to be former president of the Tennessee Press Association. He's a man of courage. He didn't have to do that. That community has a Lions Club that sponsored the horse show. But bottom line, this is the result of we the people. We're going to get there one way or the other. So thank you for everything they've done. Thank you for the media for coming today. Thank you for interviewing all of us. And we're so proud, so proud to be part of this. It's the most inspiring thing I've done. And one more time, this gentleman here, Senator Tidings, his daughter Mary, his daughter Eleanor, his grandson Ben, who's here with us today. Y'all seen him. We've had pictures with him and Marty. They're the difference makers. They're out in front on this, and we're trying to conclude what the senator started, and we're going to conclude it. He inspired me personally. He uh, never asked, I never asked him to do anything he didn't do. Very bright man, statesman, as I told you. He was appointed U.S. Attorney by the Kennedys, and Robert would call him periodically, that's John Kennedy's brother, and say, Joe, can't you indict somebody besides a Democrat? Didn't make any difference to Senator Tide. He's going to do it the way it was supposed to be done. And that's, we've gotten away from some of that. But in this event, Senator Titus came to walk on Washington in 2014. He was in the hot sun. And then there was